YouTube family, it's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. In today's video, I am showing you how my husband Chris took a piece of unwanted, unloved, donated piece of furniture and gave it new life. On our channel, we do lots of thrift flips, including small items all the way to large items like furniture. So we love to share the process and our vision for giving these items new life. Chris stopped by the local Habitat for Humanity and fell in love with this dry sink. Yes, it was a little bit worse for wear, but he definitely had a vision for giving it new life. He shares with you the process of what he did with that piece of furniture to make it new and give it new life so it can be ready for somebody to purchase to enjoy in their own home. So Chris just recently picked this up, this dry sink up from our local Habitat for Humanity. It was only $25. I absolutely think that it is a nice piece. Oh my, does it have somewhere on it? But hey, he's the furniture guy, so I had nothing to say. He knew what he was getting himself into. So he starts right off with getting all of that hardware off. Oh my gosh, that hardware is beautiful. I love these vintage pieces just because of just the detail they put on pieces now and that hardware is just gorgeous. Can I tell you how happy Chris was when he one found the third knob inside and then also found the screw in the bottom of the cabinet. If you are a furniture flipper, you know that that hardware, one, is nice to have, and two, the screw is even more so than the hardware. Just because of the length of the screw, you know it already fits that thick of wood. And then there's definitely no need for any of this paper. Luckily, as you can see, it wasn't even stuck down, but you're always a little bit leery what might be underneath that. So now he's going to give this piece an overall cleaning and we're trying out the super clean product. I So far we really like it. It is a great degreaser. It's great at getting all the crud and the stuff that's left behind. It's working great as a deglosser. I have to say I, we really do like this product. And no, we're not sponsored, but I will link it in my description because we really do think it's a great product. Now I have to say by all this water damage in this dry sink that it was actually used as a dry sink. So I don't know if the texture's showing up. I know the unevenness of the finish is showing up on camera, but it was very raised, very bumpy, very uneven where water had sat on that over time. It has, luckily this is a solid wood so you can sand it so chris is getting in there with his orbital sander and then where he won't be able to get in he'll have to hand sand but it actually did take quite a bit of sanding to get this to be nice and even so he is just using a 220 on his orbital sander of sandpaper he didn't want to use anything less than that meaning less in a number higher the grain because you don't want to raise that wood grain any more than it already is. So he's just, that's why it's going to take him a little bit of time using the 220. And then it's just one of those processes. There is no easy way to do it. You just keep having to sand and then you keep having to fill because your eye is going to be very much deceiving you the way that the finish is. So just keep feeling it until it's nice and smooth to your touch. So I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, $25 was too much for this piece of furniture. Now he's got to fix this part. So I don't know what the bottom of this had sat in. It had some oily residue on it. So I don't know if that piece was already broken or on the way in when he brought it home from Habitat. It, it had to be on its way to be broken. So he's just putting some tight bond glue and then going to be clamping it and getting that detail piece to be attached back on to that beautiful detailing on the bottom of this. And yes, I know $25, you probably think it was too much for this. We are not running across a lot of furniture right now, especially solid wood pieces. So we are happy, especially like a little unique find like this dry sink. 
So then letting that glue sit up overnight and do what glue does and sticks two things together and then a little bit of sanding to make sure that there was no bumped raised of the glue or the grain. So now Chris is using the black onyx that we get right off the shelf at Walmart. It's a ready to use paint and he is just going in and he's going to be painting all the edges and all the detail of the piece with just the black onyx. I just kind of learned that if I'm only distressing the edges and all the detail piece, there's no reason for me to waste paint, waste product by painting the entire piece. We like to distress our pieces when we get all finished with them. So this is just something that we learned ourselves not to waste product. Now, if you have not already subscribed to our channel and you like this kind of content, how we share, how we flip furniture for profit, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we have uploaded our new videos. So you know after seeing the top of this dry sink, you know that that, oh my goodness, that hardware is going to need some good cleaning. This was a definitely well-loved item back in its time. So to clean off the hardware, Chris is just going to be using some Dawn dish soap. This works wonderful for hardware. Just some hot water, some Dawn dish soap, let it soak. Look at all that gunk that's coming off that hardware. So even though Chris did not tape off this piece when he was doing the black, just because he was just doing certain parts and was going to be very careful with how he was painting on this piece. Now he is going back in and then taping off the areas that he does not want to get extra paint on because it's going to be more of a full coverage paint job now. So then he did start off by just using a tiny little paintbrush on the back. There's just that little bit of slight of wood. I don't, we don't like to paint over any numbers or any dates on a piece of furniture. And this one had that. So he was not going to be painting the back of it. But then I'm watching him do that. And I'm like, you should really just paint, tape that off. So I did go over and help him out by taping that off. So the white paint he's using is just the Kills Paint and Primer. It's a flat white and you get it right off the shelf at Walmart. It's already mixed. And if you notice the tape on the back of the doors that it's kind of sticking out there, he is leaving the inside of this cabinet natural. So he's leaving the back side of the cabinet doors natural also. So it's almost to be expected with this type of piece that especially since a lot of that poly that top coat was kind of off that it was going to yellow the white paint and we don't waste the shellac until we had put at least one or two coats of white on to see if that would if it would bleed through or not so he that's what he's doing now is this cabinet is bleeding through it's making the white paint yellow so he is just using shellac this is a wonderful product for well, however i'm not a chemist but it seals in where that's bleeding through and you can paint right over and proceed onto your white so unfortunately it did take a couple times to cover that up spraying that shellac anyway here's where you could really tell the difference between the white paint and where that old finish on this piece had made it yellow but whatever it is about that shellac if you are going to paint anything in a light color i highly suggest having at least one can laying around now he's proceeding on to paint the rest of the piece this is his second coat of white paint this is where you can really see where it yellowed and how it's just the white paint is now staying whiter and not yellowing I don't know about you all, but I can already see the beauty in this piece. Just getting that finishing the third coat of white paint on there and leaving that interior just that natural, beautiful wood. It's just the right tone of color of that wood, not too warm and not too ashy, just absolutely beautiful.
So now it's time to work on that problem area. Not that yellowing isn't a problem, but you know that he had to really go in with the sander and remove a lot of this finish. So we got two different textures going on here. But like I said, we don't waste the shellac. We just put a couple coats of the white paint on and see what, what happens first. Sometimes nothing happens and sometimes, yep, you gotta go back with that shellac. But I, this is just what works for us and we don't like to waste if we don't have to. Remember, the Kills brand that he's using is a paint in primer, so there's no need for him to go in with a primer to even out that texture. This already has a primer in it. And this actually doesn't even have an odor to it. So now to tackle more of that hardware. Now that it's all cleaned and dry, he is going in with Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black. I absolutely love this Rust-Oleum spray paint for spray painting metal, especially hardware. Well, I know you could have predicted, yep, it is yellowing. Wherever that finish was left on, it just yellowed right through that, that white paint. So to the rescue comes the shellac spray again. So now he's going in with his second coat of the Kills Paint Primer and we'll see what happens if that was enough to cover up that yellow and then you can just proceed on with the right paint or if it's going to be a problem child. And then before flipping these pieces over and getting the other side painted black, we have learned that if we polyacrylic, which we always finish them off with the polyacrylic top coat anyway, that if we spray that polyacrylic and let that dry before we flip these pieces over, the chance of accidentally marring up that first paint does not happen. This just seals that in and gives it that protection that you're able to flip these over with ease without worry of them getting all messed up. Why that top is deciding to be a problem child, Chris is going to go ahead and get the drawer and these front cabinet doors distressed. So what he's doing is taking some 220 sandpaper and he's running it along those hard, those sharp edges just to bring out this beautiful detail that was hidden with all just being a plain color. When we go into distress it, that's why we are obsessed with distressing. It just brings out all that hidden detail that you don't see when it's one color. And then make it so it has a nice smooth finish. He just takes a light hand and goes over the rest of the paint that is on these pieces and just smooths out anything, anything like you feel the brush strokes, even though you don't see them, you might feel them just so it has a nice smooth finish. So now to finish these three pieces up and give it another level of protection on that white paint, he's just going in with some Varathane finishing wax. He's just gonna use a waxing brush to put it on and then wipe off any excess. And then I will go in with some of my black and white contact paper that I get at the dollar store. You can buy it at Amazon also. I do link it in my description box and my Amazon store if you're interested. But I absolutely love this little pop, this little hidden pop of color. One, it makes it feel like the drawer is brand new, that the piece is brand new even though it is a thrifted flipped item. So I guess I have not shared enough on how because i do this pretty much on every piece of our furniture how i have achieved always putting this contact paper into drawers so i try to leave a little bit more than what i need because i'm always afraid that i'm going to end up cutting it too short it's better to be a little bit extra than not enough so what i do is i try to take the edge that is made by the manufacturer and butt it up to the back of the drawer and then just gingerly work my hand from the middle working the way out to get this piece nice and flat and nice and tight and then why i'm doing that i take my fingers and i run rum them right down right into the crease of that drawer creasing that contact paper so then i go i lift that piece up i can see where that corner is and I take my scissors and I make a cut to that center of the corner. And that way I know when I'm taking my X-Acto knife around the rest of the entire piece to cut the excess off, I'm at my corner and it'll come off easily.
Now I just take this spatula, this scraper, and then I push hard into the side of the drawers and I take that X-Acto knife and then just cut the excess of that paper off. This is just a process that has been working for me. That way if I get those corners cut, I don't have to worry about accidentally ripping the paper or the frustration of pulling too much off. Well, we waited for paint to dry, we waited for slack to dry, we waited for paint to dry again, and it's still being a problem child. So I thought, you know what, I have this Waverly chalk paint, so why not use a little bit of this Waverly chalk paint and see if that helps with the yellowing. I'm not sure, it can't hurt to try. Luckily, there's always something to work on while you're waiting for paint to dry. So Chris is just putting the hardware back on the areas that he can. So he's just got that freshly painted and top coat little knobs. And this is where it's like, oh, yes, thank God that I found that screw. That way I don't have to try to find a screw the replacement or I don't have to try to cut a screw down, which is not always the easiest thing to do. I know that I've said this before, but I don't think I'll ever tire of how that black hardware pops on that freshly painted white. So that did the trick. Another coat of the Waverly White chalk paint and those edges that were still coming through yellow. And then to blend it all together, another top coat over there of the Kills paint and primer in the flat white. Now he can finally go on to distressing the edges of the top of this piece. He, he actually worked on the rest of the piece while he was waiting for the top to dry. Now he's on the home stretch. Now he is finishing up the bottom of the piece Varathane waxing it to get this a bad boy this problem child but man it is a beautiful piece you don't come across these dry sinks every day and i know in our area that somebody will be happy to have this type of a cabinet so sometimes you never know what's going to be a problem child or not but it is a beautiful piece So you just have to love how this piece turned out. It is just, it was well loved. It had served its purpose and now it can live its life out being a beautiful extra storage piece for someone. Thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of Chris's furniture flip? I absolutely loved this dry sink. Yes, it had a little bit of, it was being a little stubborn. It did not want to be white, but that's sometimes with older furniture, you never know what you're going to get into, but it is definitely beautiful now. So I thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. You just have helped our channel grow just by you watching our videos and giving us a kind comment and a thumbs up lets YouTube know you like this kind of comment content and they will keep recommending us and if you're new to our channel please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video